Hey y'all, welcome back to Right at the Wire. Well, as part of our daily stakes play at Saratoga, we're going to be looking at Friday's card and the Saranac stakes, which is a grade three on the turf. And uh, we'll get to see Carl Spackler and see if he can take this field down. Let's take a look at it. Okay, the Saranac stakes is a grade three run of the inner turf at a mile and a sixteenth. And it's for three-year-olds only. And it's the fourth race on the card uh, Friday at Saratoga. And we'll hope they'll keep this one on the turf as... They've been taking a lot of races off lately. Uh, it's the end of the meet. Come on, give us a graded stakes on turf, please. Number one is Taking Candy. Uh, has shown some uh, some progression and uh, is definitely getting better on the right track. Cherie DeVos had a really nice year. Uh, the optional claimer last time, this one did win the race, but was kind of begging for the finish. Uh, Mercante was uh, closing like a freight train in particular. Um it was a it was a nice a solid race, but you didn't get the feel that another step forward was likely possible. Uh, th this one was I don't even know if he was necessarily the best horse that day, uh, but is heading in the right direction. Certainly another step forward would put this one in the mix, but I think the uh, others are more salty, have a little bit more experience, and probably a little classier. So uh, if you do use taking candy, it would be under only. And bottom of the try, bottom of the super. Uh, and you are getting a halfway decent price at 8-1, to one, which I think will probably drift up from here. Number two is Carl Spackler, and he's uh, the logical favorite in here at 4-5. to five, And uh, he's a, certainly the win candidate. That last race in the Hall of Fame uh, was ultra impressive, uh, getting a 97 buyer. I think he'll probably get on the lead here and just wire this field. He's the best horse. Uh, he's got a smaller field than what he usually runs against, which is to his advantage. He's had a lot of uh, races. He's been compromised by very wide posts. And uh, he's even, I didn't know Chad Brown even scratched him out of one race because he had the 11 uh, posts. But this time, much more favorable. I think he's got everything working for him here. No reason to bet against. Uh, and he's my pick to win the race. Number three is Freedom Trail. And uh, this one seems to be in kind of a holding pattern. He has faced some really good company in his defense. Uh, the Penn and Ridge, the Transylvania, uh, the Columbia, he, they're all really good fields. And he was on the Derby Trail for a little while after a couple wins to start. But uh, clearly turf is better for him than dirt. Uh, he Again, he's faced some really good company. So he's probably a little better than it looks on paper. But the thing is, the Kent last time really wasn't the greatest of fields, and he's still wasn't able to do anything despite being the chalk. And that's kind of the issue. It's probably one of those things he really hasn't, the light bulb hasn't gone off yet. Uh, so maybe it does here. Uh, I still don't think he can beat Carl Spackler, but <laughs> at 10 to 1, I think he's pretty good value. And uh, I would certainly use underneath for uh, the try and the super for sure. Yakolev uh, from Ireland is a bit of a wild card. Uh, we're not really sure what we've got here. This one's been running on straightaways mostly. And uh, the thing is kind of interesting is he's won on soft ground to me and soft turf. And, you know, the reason usually they come over here is when they like it firm. So kind of interesting there. Uh, he has run in some higher class stakes races in England and done pretty well, which is certainly in his favor. And Jack Sisterson is 18%. First time with the t with the team. Uh, his works over the turf uh, since coming over are okay. I wouldn't say they're great. So he may need one to adjust a little bit. You are getting 12 to 1. I think it's likely that he'll factor in this race. Uh, but underneath is probably the limit. I don't see him as a win candidate. But at 12 to 1, you're getting good value. Number five is activist investing. And if anybody's going to beat Carl Spackler... This is the horse. I really like this horse. Uh, the last race at a mile and an eighth, this one showed a really uh, nice kick in the stretch, and that was a really good field. Uh, clever thought, operation towards those are nice horses, and he put them away. Uh, really liked what uh, what he did first time on Lasix. Now, the only thing you can say is that it's coming off for this race, so perhaps he won't be at his optimum. Uh, if you note his three prior efforts, he did run off the Lasix and he did uh, progress with each one. Uh, and those were all at two years old. He debuts with a career high buyer at three. Always love to see that. So I'll fully expect he's going to run another good race 
maybe not quite as uh, good as it could be with Lasix. I don't know, but uh, I like his chances in this race. He's an, uh, he's a use for sure, and um, it, like I say, if anybody's going to beat Carl Spackler, I think this is the one to do it. Number six is Mendelssohn's March, and uh, this one's shown some precocity at, at Oakland. And they started moving him onto the Derby Trail late, but uh, the results weren't terribly good in the bluegrass. So uh, away to turf, he's gone, and he hasn't done bad. Uh, he's had he's run against uh, some horses maybe a little saltier than than he on turf, but uh, you can see in the Audubon he was able to uh, to put a good effort together, and just got out kicked by Web Slinger, which is no sin whatsoever. Uh, in the Bald Eagle, he was wide all the way around the track. And so it can't really, uh, you know, it would explain why he probably didn't have a lot of kick late and why as a, a kind of a chalky horse in that race, he didn't factor better. But I think this one's capable of more. And you've got him in a situation where I don't think he can beat Carl Spackler. But uh, I think he's certainly going to run better and that. Is good news because you might get uh, better value, but I think you can use this one under comfortably uh, and maybe even in the exacta. Lost Ark is uh, an interesting one. Uh, he's all dirt, uh, so is his pedigree, and you just kind of wonder if Todd Pletcher just figures he needs a race, uh, wants, to, wants to get him in somewhere, so uh, he picks a two-turn event because that's what this horse wants to do. Uh, the Curlin last time, he was eager to get to the lead, and he just couldn't get it from Scotland. And uh, consequently, he just sort of got frustrated and fell back late. This one has shown some talent, but you do note every time he's stepped up in class uh, that he's kind of faltered. So you have to wonder uh, if maybe he's just a cut below. Uh, he's he's a, an okay fit here, I think. He'll certainly get the distance. And uh, stranger things have happened. But uh, I, I don't think he's a threat to win this race. But uh, at 8-1, to one, you don't get Pletcher and Arad Ortiz at that price too often. Uh, he's worth putting underneath on the tickets for sure. Number 8 is Gilmore. And if this race does go to the dirt, which it, unfortunately it just very well may, uh, he's one you have to consider. Brendan Walsh has had a great meet at Saratoga. He's been hot now for, geez, it seems like about five months. Uh, Gilmore is a horse you absolutely have to beat. Where you use Carl Spackle to win, this horse you try to beat. Uh, he is a, rep uh, a perennial disappointment. Um, he just doesn't seem to be able to find the winner's circle. I'm not sure just yet if he has seconditis or not, but he just seems to always disappoint. And, you know, it, it, he's faced some good fields. That's true. Like the last time, you know, he faced New York Thunder, rest in peace. Uh and Drew's gold. That was a nice field, but uh, he had everything his way. He had a hot pace to run to, 21 and 43, and couldn't do anything with it. Uh, he just seems to always disappoint. I can't put it any other way. So I think if this does go to dirt, while well, you have to use him, 7 to 5 is way too short for a horse like this, and I think you absolutely have to beat him, maybe with Lost Ark or Mendelssohn's March, but uh, he's one to consider if it does move to dirt. So here's what our top five looks like for the Saranac Stakes. Number one, I'm going with Carl Spackler. He's the best horse in the race. That's the bottom line. Uh, I don't think anybody's as good as he is. Uh, coming in second off the layoff, I expect another move forward. Uh, I think likely he will get on the lead as the best horse, and he'll just take him on a merry chase all the way around the track. Uh, I don't think there's anybody realistic to beat him in here. He's a logical win candidate, and he's the pick. Number two is Activist Investing. He is coming off Lasix in this race. But he debuted at three with a career-high buyer. I think he'll logically move forward here. And if he runs the way he did in his last race, he's going to give Carl Spackler all he can handle. But uh, maybe just a bit below. Uh, but I like activist investing, number two. Number three is Mendelssohn's March. I think we haven't seen the best of him yet. Um, he's had some trouble trips. Last one in particular, wide all the way around the track. He's got a smaller field here, shorter distance. I think those both will help him uh, tremendously. And it's not the greatest field when you get to pass the top two. So I think he has every chance and you get a decent price. Mendelssohn's March, number three. Number four, we're going to go with Lost Ark. He's a bit of a wild card in this race. Not sure how he's going to handle turf, but he has had a couple of works over it. It looks okay. Um, I think this one does have some talent. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. But right now, uh, I would consider him a cut below. 
and that is the case with with some horses in this race. So he's got every chance, and I'll I'll put him in as number four. Number five, we're going to go with Yalkolev. Uh He's a wild card. Not sure what we've got. He hasn't been around two turns yet, uh, but he has run in some graded races uh, overseas, and I think that means a lot here class wise. Uh, so I, I'll have to believe that he'll get two turns in Jack Sisterson, good trainer first off the bench. Uh, so Yakolev, I think, has a chance to be under and 12 to 1, probably an overlay. And uh, so that's a pretty good price. Got to use him underneath in the exotics. So that's the Saranac. Uh, I think it's a coming out party or, or a continuing party for Carl Spackler. Uh, he looks like the class of the field and will be awful hard to beat. Uh, but. We'll see. It's horse racing. You never know. Hopefully, it'll stay on turf. If it doesn't, well, then we don't know what's going to happen. So, uh, if you like content like this, you can go on over to our website at Reddit The Wire. We're going to have Saratoga coverage uh, continuing through the conclusion of the meet. Two-year-old analysis, daily plays, as well as full cards on the weekend. So, you'll have that all available to you. If you play the spa, go on over there and take a look. If you do like the content that you see here, uh, please like and subscribe. It does help to keep us going. And we thank those of you who have come on recently. Uh, love the way this community continues to grow. And you guys are just so great with the comments. I, 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 you know, I really appreciate it very much. Uh, you know, and I, I don't mind criticism either. So uh, thank you for uh, participating, I guess I should say, say. And that's what I really wanted out of this community is that we have a group that talks to each other and we're all helping each other be right at the wire because that's what it's all about. I uh, hope our analysis helps you. Uh, in your wagering strategy, and I wish you the best of luck this weekend as always. That's it for today. Uh, we'll talk to you in the very near future. Got a big weekend coming up. Delmar's got a really nice pick five, uh, all stakes, and we'll have a, a sequence on that, a, uh, a posting rather. And, of course, we'll, uh, we've got Saratoga to consider in the Pacific Classic. So a lot of good things happening this weekend. You're going to get a lot of content from me. So I'll be talking to you soon, and until then, be well.